Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to be using Treeit because a lot of you commented on our last video that you wanted to see a tutorial on this. So, as I said before, you can download this from Steam. Uh, it's only four or five bucks, but if you want to use it for free, you can go over to the link in the description and then you can download it there. So right here in the program, this will be the first thing you see, just a tree trunk. And we have this little guy for reference and some nice HDRIs for lighting. You can also see the tree is swaying a little bit. So it's also animated, so that's really cool. But yeah, this uh, program might be a little bit intimidating at first, but once you figure it out, it's pretty easy to use and you can quickly make trees you want. So uh, just going over the simple UI, right here on the right hand side is where we will be changing most of our things. And here at the bottom, you can see the total amount of polygons, which is a really nice metric to use. So right now we have 456. Uh, I'm making a game, so I want to keep my polys as low as possible. So this is really useful to look at. And also, if you're going to use this in Blender, just uh, try to make it as minimal as possible. So you can save up some space in your scene. Here at the top, we have different uh, modes. The most common one you're going to be searching for is probably the wireframe. So you can look at the wireframe here. That's just this button. The rest you can turn off like the shading or what's this? The wind animation and the grid on the floor. But most of the time that's just going to be on. You can also create an imposter, which is basically just a level of detail for a tree. As you can see, it's just two planes. It's really useful for games uh, and things like that. But let's just get started with this. Another thing you might want to know is if you go over here to file and then open, this will open up the tree it uh, library. And here you can find a couple of example trees. So right here in the samples library, we can go over to birch, for example, and then just open this birch.tree file, and you have a birch tree ready to use. So these are just presets, uh, but I suggest you make something your yourself. So just uh, open up a new tree and click yes. So the first thing we need to do is of course add some branches to this since trees have branches. So we can go over to the branch tab here and just increase the branch count. Right now it just looks like a generic tree that you would see outside. You can increase the branch segments. This is just the geometry and in the left hand corner you can see the geometry change as well. So that's really cool. Usually I keep my branch segments at around 8 or 12 or 16 depending on what level of detail I want. Eight sides is uh, pretty uh, pretty much just enough. And then for the sides, we can uh, set this to eight as well. Just uh, reducing the amount of polygons we have. So uh, we have a lot of control on these branches and I recommend you just uh, click on this uh, tab to kind of make this a little bit smaller so you have more, more of an overview of everything you can change. Normally I wouldn't change anything uh, beyond the orientation so the pitch yaw roll uh, or split I, and sign i usually don't ever use but the rest you can uh, change of course so for the tree i want to make you could probably like add some branch gravity and get some curvature going just uh, whatever you want you might want to change the pitch only if you're going to make uh, like a hanging tree like this one so you can just uh, get the direction down so i'll keep that uh, right here and the branch distortion is just a wrinkliness uh, at first i didn't really think i had to use this but then a couple days ago i was in the bus and looking at the trees and i noticed that the branches are pretty wrinkly so uh definitely crank that up to about 20 at least something else i always like to change is go over to the branch position and then set the position max to 100 normally it's at 90 and it just makes for a really ugly top of the tree uh at 100 i also think it's a little bit ugly this one's sticking out but it is what it is you probably won't see that in the final tree but you can also change the uh, minimum position so if you want it to be a little bit higher you can change that here so now that we're done with the branches you can also go over to the branch LUT creation and this just adds some branches to the branches. For the tree that I'm making right now, it's probably not the best idea to get some branchlets going. But for like a maple tree or an oak tree, uh, branchlets are pretty much just a must have. You pretty much just need a branchlet. Also make sure to save this. So control S and then just uh, save it somewhere where you can find it later. I always make a dedicated folder. And this tree will be up on my Gumroad as a uh, object file, but also just as uh, the tree it file. So you can change that however you like. You can also change the length here, which uh, might be a useful thing to do. The length in increment as well. 
So just uh, how big it is at the bottom compared to the end and then just uh, change that according to what you want. I can't really go over every single slider but you can just uh, play with it and then you can see what it does and just uh, make something you want. It would be dumb for me to go over to every single slider because I don't actually use every single one so I don't know what they do. Uh, so you can just figure it out yourself. Another really cool feature about this program is that you can go over to the trunk again and then just go over to the trunk texture here and click on load texture. And right here, current texture, you can set this to one of the bark presets and this will immediately apply a texture to your tree and it's already mapped and all so you don't have to think about that at all i think this is a spruce texture i think bark six uh, i'm not sure you can also go over to the normal and roughness this usually just uh does it automatically when you export it to blender you have to find this uh image again so it doesn't really matter it's just more of a preview thing so yeah this uh looks pretty pretty sprucey i'd say now we can go over to the leaf and the first thing you want to do is just go over to the leaf texture click on load texture and get another uh, leaf texture enabled you probably want to go with uh, one of the branches and i'd say something like uh branch six branch eight is uh good for now you can just uh, see what these all are now that we've added the texture uh right here in the texture itself we can change the position of this purple dot and just place it at the origin of the branch and then we can go over to the leaf count and just increase that and we've added some leaf right now it just creates uh, these leaf textures or branches at the tip of the branch and then just outwards in a random direction but we of course want to make that so the leaves are going down and we can do that in the uh, forces and then the position and the pitch again just like we did with the trees so i'm just going to close everything up again and then we can go over to the shape change the length we can go over to the forces and change the gravity and the position as well this position is uh the position along the branches so if you set this to pos position minimum to 100 it will only be at the tip and if you set this to zero it will be at the stem as well and you can just uh, play with that until you get a nice range change the uh leaf orientation up factor i like to do this because you can then just change them to point down and that adds a lot more realism to the tree right now we can see this this plane of uh, leaves existing here and we want to kind of break that up a little bit so you can do that in a couple of ways uh, but the method i like to use is just go over to leaf creation and set the leaf segments to two and the leaf sides to two as well we are still at 4702 polygons so that's pretty good there's not really much uh, we can improve on go over to the leaf distortion and add some crinkliness to break this up a little bit and probably also in the pitch or y'all just uh, change that as well just add some randomness until we get something like this and as you can see the top is still pretty pretty bad looking but we can either fix that or just ignore it there are a lot of sliders to play with but uh mostly i just use the top ones until the orientation and after that only when i know what i'm doing so right now i think this is uh, pretty much just done for export not really much i can do with it. the total polygons are pretty low and there are uh, there's still one thing we need to do before we export and let's go over to the leaf then the leaf creation and change this back faces to single-sided and right now this will create a shading issue in this program but that is just because this one uh, doesn't support two-sided faces so it kind of duplicates it and flips it and that just adds some annoying polygons uh, blender doesn't do this if you are looking at the back normal it, it will just show the image regardless but uh, just for exporting disable this so we don't get those extra faces to export it we can just go over to file and then export and then you can choose one of these one of these options uh the ones you probably know are the fbx and obj i suggest going with obj uh normally i would choose fbx but this program sadly supports the supports a version of fbx that doesn't import into blender it uses a ascii uh, file format i believe instead of a binary or other way around doesn't really matter you can find a converter on autodesk site so you can change that but for me just using the obj works as well so just export that and save it to a folder where you can find it later when you export it make sure to add the .obj file format uh, after you've named your tree otherwise it won't save correctly so just tutorial.obj instead of just tutorial and now we can go into blender and just hit ax and then delete and then go over to file import and then click obj go over to the place where you save it and then just import the obj and the mtl file and right now it will be imported at a really large scale so you can just hit s and then click 
0.01 and this will scale it to the original size in the program as you can see it's uh, five meters tall right now if you go back to tree as we can see in the tree the global tree scale is 500 which means 500 centimeters so just scale it down a hundred times then just hit ctrl a and all transforms so you get the scaling and then go over to z and then rendered view and change this to cycles and we can disable the scene world so you get an hri and then we can fix the textures a little bit so go over to the shader editor and materials here as well in the bark you can see we only have the albedo texture so just delete that then hit Control shift t with no triangular add-on enabled and then go over to the place where you save your obj file and the texture should be here so just uh, shift select everything and then principal texture setup and then it will add all the textures and then you can just duplicate the roughness and set this mapping to the vector as well and then just open up the bark the bark doesn't do the principal texture setup since it doesn't have albedo in the file name texture or diffuse uh, that sucks but it is what it is in the branch we can do the same thing just delete that then Control shift t and then import the branch then duplicate the roughness set up the factor and then open up the branch texture to the color and make sure to get the alpha of the albedo texture and plug it into the alpha as well and here we have our tree and i think this looks really cool if you think this looks a little bit uh, see-through you can also delete the transmission and this will make it a little bit more opaque now if you go back to tree add something else we can do is just change the global tree scaling so you get different scaling and then hit randomize so you get a different seed value and this will just make the same tree but then with a different seed so you have a different variation without much effort you just export that as well and then go over to blender and import that again you can scale this down to 0.01 hit apply all transforms and then what we can do is just go over to this material tab and just change all the bark textures to the original bark and the branch to the original branch that way we don't have to assign new material groups but if we delete this all the material groups will be gone and you have to apply that again so just do that uh, with the little drop down and it will just be linked to the original material so we don't use two textures at once and it's really cool so yeah that's pretty much how you make trees and tree it you can make any type of tree you want for completely free you can use these textures these these are cc0 you can sell them i will probably make a tree pack with like a hundred trees in the following couple days since i'm going to use it for the game but yeah that's it you can just uh, use it buy it on steam it's much easier to set up it's much much easier to run and it's just a really just a better experience overall. But if you don't want to spend that kind of money, I understand that. You can just download it for free from the website. So that was the tutorial. I hope you enjoyed. Like the video. Goodbye.